So IKFK blend using a blend node is actually pretty easy to set up. Uh, even with an arm like this that has two elbows, that's a minor hiccup, but not really a huge one. So the first thing I usually do is I'm going to select my arm joint or my arm chain, uh, starting from the shoulder, and then I'm just going to Control D on my keyboard or Command D, either one. If you're on a Mac, it's going to be Command on a PC or Windows, it's going to be Control. So Control D to duplicate, and so that's going to be one chain. I'm going to Control D it one more time to create yet another chain. And so one of these is going to be my IK chain, other is going to be my FK chain. So first, let's get rid of a few things that we don't need. So the only joints I'm going to need are the shoulder, the elbow joint, and probably the wrist. So I'm going to select the palm joint of each one and just delete all the extra fingers. Then I'm going to select the root joint of both the FK and the IK chain. I'm going to shift un, uh, shift P to unparent them from the main hierarchy. Okay, so our bind structure and then our FK and our IK structure. I'm going to take my IK and then create a new layer and call it my IK layer. Now you don't have to necessarily keep these layers, but it actually uh, comes in handy when it comes to setting up the structure. Uh, Depending on your goals later, you may want to actually get rid of the layers and just control the visibility of the FK and the IK structures in other ways or hide them completely. So here's my FK. So FK and IK. Now usually you also want to name your joint chains accordingly. Quick and easy way to name your chains without having to go to every single joint is first select the root of let's say the IK chain go to modify uh, search and replace and you want to tell it hierarchy you want to tell it to search for a keyword in the name in my case is joint and I'm going to have it replace it with uh, IK underscore so that it becomes IK joint and I apply it and so now if I actually select the joints in my chain each one in the hierarchy should have been prefixed with IK and I can do the same thing for the FK chain, just replacing the I with an F, so it becomes the FK chain. Okay, so now we have IK and our FK chains. Pretty easy. Next, we need to start making connections. Now, before we can start making connections, we need to create the blend colors node, uh, which we're going to use to have our uh, FK and IK structures control the bind structure. So, go to Window, Rendering Editors, Hypershade. Hypershade is usually used for just shaders, same thing for the utility nodes, but utility nodes are just basically passing and calculating values. So you can actually use them to help in pretty much any area of Maya as long as you connect things where you, you need them connected. So I need the Blend Colors node, and I'm going to need one for basically shoulder and then a separate one for the elbow. So I can just take this one and I can just control D to duplicate it. And then of course name each one accordingly. So I'm going to call this one my blend shoulder. And again you want to name everything you create. Uh, so that it's much easier to find all of your elements when you need to fix, repair, or delete something. Okay, so we have shoulder and the elbow. And now we need to start making connections into the structure. So what I'm going to do first is I'm actually going to connect them into the bind structure first. We'll set up the control mechanism. So bring go to window. Oops, here. So here's my hypershade window. Here are my two nodes, each named. And I'll just pull this out of frame. Okay, so now I go to Window, General Editors, Connection Editor. Bring up your Connection Editor, and we need to load in our bind joints. And in this case, I need the shoulder, and I need the elbow. And I'll take the uh, I have two elbow joints. I'm going to take the first one, and I'm going to reload the right side, which is our two side. 
which is basically it's going to be the side it's going to be receiving input from the nodes. Okay, and now I need my hypershade window. And now I need to select both nodes, shoulder and elbow, and then I'm going to reload the left side, which loads in our blend nodes. Make sure it says from on the side where you have your nodes so that it, they'll be the source. Okay, and so now in this case we need the outputs from these nodes. So on the left side, go to show outputs only, and then go to show non keyable, and then you get the outputs from the blend nodes. And so to connect them to the joints, you simply want to connect them in the same order that the rotate values appear. R goes to X, B goes to Y, and sorry, G goes to Y, and B goes to Z. So to connect them, it's pretty easy. Uh, make sure you're connecting to the right one. So if you have blend elbow, make sure you're connecting to the elbow joint. So we go output uh, output R goes to rotate X on the elbow, and G to the Y, B to the Z, and then for the shoulder, R to the X of the shoulder joint, G to the Y of the shoulder joint, and B to the Z of the shoulder joint. So now all of those values are connected. And you may have noticed uh, the bind joint twitch a little bit. Don't worry about that. We're still working on things. So now we have everything connected. Um, now we need to actually have our joint structures, our IK joint structure and our FK joint structure start feeding into the blend nodes. So let's start with the IK structure. So let's start with the shoulder joint. So select your shoulder joint, reload the left side of your connection editor. And if you haven't already loaded, uh, if you don't have your nodes still selected, as I did, you can go to the hypershade again, select your nodes, and load them into the right side of the connection editor, which is going to now receive input from our control joints. And then you can close the hypershade, because we only need the connection editor right now. And so on the left side, you want to make sure that it's showing all readable, and then we can have it not show the non keyable because so now we just need the basic rotation from the shoulder. And so I need the rotate X to connect in to color one of my blend shoulder node. And so in this case, it's going to be the shoulder, the IK shoulder joints, rotation X to the color 1R, Y to G and Z to B. Okay, and if you actually uh, have the node selected, you can actually go to your channels box and you can scrub the value of the blend, and you'll see that it's actually aligning to match the IK chain because it's now feeding in, getting the information from the IK chain. Remember that the FK and the IK chains are slightly rotated off center so that they do have values coming in from their shoulder joints and those values can feed directly in and basically augment the rotation of our bind structure. So now we need to have the FK feed in as well and so reload the left side while you have the FK shoulder joint selected and then take your rotate X and instead of connecting it to color 1 you're going to connect it to color 2 of the blend shoulder node. So rotate X connects to color 2 R, rotate Y, color 2 G, rotate Z, color 2 B. And so now the FK shoulder joints are fully connected and set up for the blend. And once those connections are made, you can actually you can usually come over to your channels box and you can actually see the blend node in there. And if you set it to 0.5, it'll uh, center our bind structure between the IK and the FK structures. So now you need to actually start making connections with your elbow. So now we need the IK elbow and the FK. We can actually load them in both at the same time, reload. Just make sure you're keeping track of what connections you're making. So IK first, and IK goes into color one, FK goes into color two. Okay, so color one, IK. And then FK elbow goes into color two of the elbow blend. 
x to r. Okay, and so all of those connections are made. So now one of the last things you need to do is you actually need to create something to control the switching. The switching is going to happen now from the node. So if I scrub to zero, it goes towards the FK, and if I scrub to one, it goes to the IK. That's why the uh, that you had to connect them to a specific color node. If the IK is connected to color one, when you feed a one into the node, that's the direction that the bind structure tries to follow. Tries to follow the IK. If you put zero in, it tries to follow the FK. Okay, so now we just need to create a switch to control this in the end. So you can pretty much use anything you want, any of the control curves or types of controllers you're going to make, whether it's going to be a panel or a slider. We're usually going to make it something that's going to be a scrubbable value. You don't want to switch immediately because it is a blend setup. So you're actually trying to use this uh, within your animation. So you can have any curve or even a joint. I mean, basically something that you're going to be using. Uh, usually the wrist curve uh, that's going to control the wrist is a good place to put it something that's going to be visible all the time. So just for the purpose of this demo, I'm just going to create a nice little circle. And I'll just snap it around the wrist just to uh, keep track of things. Okay. So I'm just going to freeze this really quick. Okay. So once you've actually decided where your eye case which is going to be, you want to add an attribute to it and so you simply go to modify add attribute or you can press control and right click in the channels box while you have that curve selected it'll bring up your add attributes window and then you can create an IK FK and if you have multiple curves selected when you're adding an attribute it will add the exact same attribute to multiple curves without any sort of conflict because it'll be specific to the selected curve and so our maximum value we usually want to set to 1, minimum you want to set to 0. Minimum 0 and maximum 1, default is usually 0, unless you want the IK on by default, your call. And then you just add it in there, and now we need to connect this attribute into our blend node. So again we go back to the window, general editors, connection editor, load up the connection editor, reload the left side, the from side with your new attribute and then we need the node so again window rendering editors and go back into hypershade and in this case for the to control the entire arm we need it to control both nodes so go to utilities and you should see your nodes drag select of your nodes or shift select them whichever and then you can just reload the right side of your connection editor and you'll see both nodes and then you want to connect the IKFK attribute into the blender attribute. And once you do that, then your IKFK switch is then set up to control your IKFK or blend arm setup. Okay? And so this is completely keyable so that if you are working in IK and you're in the middle of an animation, you need it to come out and you're working, working uh, in FK, you key it at 1, and then for the next pose, you key it at 0. Just that simple. And so that's the IKFK blend setup.